put down your text editor. I have the best text editor ever. Uh, in 1980, Tim Peterson wrote the OG text editor, and that was Edlin. Uh, and Microsoft included Edlin in MS-DOS all the way up through MS-DOS 5.0. And then the next version, MS-DOS 6 and all later versions, uh, did not include it in favor of using the full screen editor uh, edit, which had appeared in MS-DOS 5. Uh, you know, why they do that? Because there was some theory about trying to make DOS easy to use. But um, FreeDOS, we wanted to include all of the originals. And uh, that's why Gregory Piesch wrote uh, a version of Edlin uh, for FreeDOS. And so if you uh, have uh, the FreeDOS distribution, uh, specifically if you have 1.2, uh, we have uh, Edlin 2.10c uh, included in there. Uh, and it doesn't run. Uh, and you might call it a bug, uh, but is, could it also be that the universe wasn't ready for Edlin 2.10c? Uh, so in any case, there's a Edlin 2.18 uh, on the website. I'll make sure there's a link to that uh, in the video description. Uh, let's go ahead and try a little bit of Edlin. So here I am in a uh, in a blank directory um, where I'm going to create some awesome text files uh, using Edlin. So let's go ahead and uh, and and uh, run Edlin. So there's a 32-bit version and a 16-bit version of Edlin, uh, and so I'm going to run the 16-bit version of Edlin here. Uh, you can just type Edlin uh, or Edlin 16, or you can give it the name of a file. And so I'll just give it a file uh, called, um, we'll call it file.txt. And uh, what you're seeing here is uh, uh, Edlin in all of its glory, and it's telling you that uh, file.txt uh, doesn't have any content in it, zero files read, or uh, zero lines read. And so uh, let, let's go ahead and actually start uh, writing text into this file. So. You do that uh, by uh, either inserting text or appending text. This is very similar if you've used uh, the VI editor or the ed editor on, on Linux or Unix. Um, here, we're going to go ahead and start appending text to the end of the file. So we'll just do A, and that's going to start appending text. And now we can just uh, start writing some, some uh, lines. So we'll just say uh, uh, this is the uh, first line of text. Uh, this is the second line of text. Uh, when we're done uh, appending, we'll do uh, a period, and that will actually tell uh, the append command that we are done. Uh, what if we wanted to actually uh, type uh, more? Well, actually, first of all, let's let's take a look at uh, what we've typed so far. Uh, to list the contents of the file, you want to do L. Now, uh, without any numbers before it, um, L is going to give you uh, uh, the lines starting 11 lines before the current line that you're on. Uh, if you want to list everything from the beginning of the file, you just do 1L, and that'll give you start everything starting at line 1, uh, listing the rest of the file. Uh, you can see the star on uh, before line 2 indicates that's the current line. So if I wanted to do an append, uh, it would start going uh, right after that. So uh, this is the uh, third line of text. And then I'll do a period. Uh, and if I do an L, you can see that uh, I've now appended uh, after that current line. Uh, if I wanted to insert text, just do an I, and that'll insert some text. Uh, this is a new line. And then again, the period on the line by itself is going to say that's that's done. So we're going to list the contents. You can see I inserted, and that inserted uh, before the star, right? Before the uh, the current line. So that was why append will append after the current line, um, and uh, I will insert before the current line. Now, what if I wanted to uh, actually print a dot at the beginning of my line? Well, there's there's certain characters you can escape, and dot is one of them. So if I wanted to do uh, an append after line four, and I wanted to put in a single period, uh, you want to escape it. So you use a backslash dot. And then if I uh, do an actual dot to just uh, exit the append, and I list the contents of my file, you can see that I've actually inserted just a plain dot. Uh, every once in a while, it's a great idea to write what you've got. So just we're going to do W, and I'll write the file back to disk. Uh, now, what if I wanted to edit some things? Um, that's the great purpose of an editor, right? So if I wanted to, uh, you know, now 
the fourth line, this is the third line, it says this is the third line of text. I want to actually edit that. Let's go ahead and actually, first of all, remind ourselves what we have. Um, so we have five lines in our file. I want to edit line four. Uh, how do you edit line four? Well, you just type four. That'll tell uh, Edlin that I want to edit the fourth line. And it'll say, okay, this is the line that you've got. And then you've got a prompt here to actually type in a new line. So uh, this is no longer the third line of text. This is the fourth line of text. And uh, do an L and you can see what I've got in there. Uh, so I've, I've got uh, still my five lines of text. Now, what if I want to uh, delete uh, a line? So uh, that period by itself isn't really useful. Uh, I want to go ahead and delete that. So you could just type D, but th what that'll do is that'll delete the, the current line that I'm on, the active line. So I actually want to delete uh, line five. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do a five uh, and then D. That will delete line five. And then list out what I have. And you can see I've now got four lines next. Uh, now, if I wanted to uh, copy some lines around, what if I wanted to copy some lines around? Well, let's go ahead and, and first uh, copy uh, line three uh, to the start of the file. And the format of copying, the, the syntax of the copy command, is you want to give the line to start at, and then a comma, and then the line to end at. I only want to copy line three, so it's a three. Uh, and then another comma, and then where I want it to go. I want this to go before line one. Uh, and then there's some other another uh, number we could put in there, but we're just not going to put in there. So we're going to give a comma as, as a placeholder, and then we're going to say copy. That's a C. Uh, and so what that'll do is that'll copy starting from line three, ending at line three, and we're going to put it in before line one. So hit return and do an L, and you can see that I now have this is a new line has been copied um, to the start of the file. I didn't actually move the file, move that line around. I just copied it. Uh, if I did want to move it around, so let's say I want to move that to uh, uh, right after line four. Um, uh, actually, let's move it right after line two so that we can actually see this been moved. Um, similar syntax. I want to start at line one, and I want to end at line one, and I want to put it before line three. And then what's the command here? Well, the command is I want to move it, M. And so that's... All you need to type and then L will do a listing of my file again and you can see that I've now moved uh, the uh, the first line down to uh, what is now the second line and so that's uh, an easy way to uh, get rid of some or to move some text around uh, now let's say I wanted to uh, delete uh, some lines let's go ahead and delete uh, line two actually before we do that let's go ahead and move line two so it's next to line four so we'll actually uh, we're going to start at line two, we're going to end at line two, and we're going to insert it before line four, and then M, right? That's going to move line two to right before line four. So I'll have two uh, lines that say this is a new line. And I'll do an L. Right, so now I've got two lines that say uh, this is a new line. So if I, what if I wanted to delete that range? Uh, again, it's a uh, similar uh, syntax. You're going to say what line I want to start at. I want to start at line three. Where do I want to end? I want to end at line four and D. That will delete lines three and four. And I do an L to list out my file. And now I have uh, back down to uh, three lines of text. Uh, might as well and, go ahead and edit that last line. So we'll do three. And then we're going to change that to say uh, this is the last line of text. And let's go ahead and list out our file. You can see that now that's what I've got. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, go ahead and, and uh, uh, search for some text. Let's say we had a very long file here. Uh, I wanted to uh, find the, the line that had second. So um, I'll show you the incorrect way to do it first, and I'll show you the correct way to do it. So remember, my current line is line three. So if I wanted to search for some text, S, what do I want to search for? Just immediately start uh, typing the text you want to search for, and I want to search for the text second. Oh, not found. Why? Because my current line is line three. So uh, I want to start at line one, and I want to search for the string second. And there it is. 
And now uh, it's found line two. If I do an L, uh, you can see that now uh, the second line is the uh, active line that I'm working on. If I wanted to do a replacement of text, so let's say first second, uh, I want to replace that with one ST, two ST, or two ND. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to we're going to do a replace. Except I want to start at line one, one R, um, and I want to replace the, uh, the word first with one ST, and that tells me what it's replaced and do a L for list, and you can see what I've done. Uh, do the same thing, uh, start at line one and replace uh, the word second with the word 2ND, L to list on my line. Um, and let's actually replace some text uh, across multiple lines. Um, let's, um, let's start at line one. And we're going to replace, uh, oops, R. We're going to replace the word text with uh, the word uh, my file. There you go. It's replaced. Uh, this is the first line of text with the first line of my file. Do an L. You can see here that uh, it's now saying the, this is the first line of my file, the second line of my file, last line of my file. Uh, what if I wanted to replace some text, but I I wasn't I, I wanted to be prompted every time I I did that. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, we're going to start at line one, and I I say okay prompt me before you make the change. So question mark is how you have it do a prompt, um, and let's say I want to re replace the text. Um, line uh, with an all uppercase. Oops, I forgot to put in the R. Line, all uppercase line. All right, so it says, all right, I found the first. Do you want to actually make that edit, have that edit take place? Yes, I do. Uh, do I want to have that edit take place? No, I don't. And do I want to have that edit take place? Yes, I do. So now the first and, and third line should have an uppercase word line, but the middle one should not. So do an L to list out the contents of my file. And there we are. We have the first and the third lines have an all uppercase line. Uh, the second one does not because when it asked us, we said no. Uh, now again, we can uh, uh, write our changes back to disk with W. Uh, and if we wanted to write it to a new file, we could absolutely do that as well. So uh, we could actually just say, uh, w and then tell it uh, new file dot txt uh, and then uh, now it's written a new a new file uh, right after I wrote the original file so I actually should have two files that are the same uh, and then how do you get out of this program it's Q and then if I do a dir you can see here uh, it's been keeping a backup copy of my uh, file but uh, file dot txt and uh, new file.txt, right? They're the same because I've grown one after another. So uh, you can see that uh, that's the basics on how to use uh, Edlin on FreeDOS. And so there you are. Uh, and before I go, I just wanted to uh, thank my Patreon supporters. Uh, uh, every one of you, I really appreciate uh, the, uh, your, your support on Patreon. You really do make this uh, channel happen. Uh, some of you have uh, contributed at a higher level, and I wanted to thank you here. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, that's it for this video. So what else would you like me to cover in uh, this video series? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Visit our website at freedos.org. Uh, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.